Good afternoon. Um, yeah, thanks uh, very much to the session organisers for uh, the invitation to speak. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, today is talk about the results of a project to uh, create or attempt to create an immersive uh, VR AR experience at the town of uh, the Roman town of Venta Iconorum in Norfolk. Um, we're here in the southeast uh, southeast of Britain. Um, it's a site that is entirely unencumbered by uh, modern development. It's now owned and managed uh, by the Norfolk Archaeological Trust. Um, and like the majority of archaeological sites that you find in the landscape, it's in open countryside. It uh, has no infrastructure. There is no museum or anything like that. And there is highly variable mobile phone signals. So that was some of the uh, things that uh, influenced our, our project and this creates some challenges for any project involving uh, the application of uh, technology. Uh, it's a project um, that we did in collaboration with the uh, Norfolk Archaeological Trust um, and also Jam Creative Studios who are a, a Cardiff-based SME who work on uh, heritage on the use of uh, VR in particular for uh, heritage applications. And I'll happily admit in many ways I'm not, I'm not a tech uh, person. What drives me in this context is that I'm uh, passionate about finding new ways to communicate archaeological findings uh, to the general public. The use of uh, reconstruction, the use of uh, interpretation, interpretive reconstruction drawings has a long history, of course, uh, in, uh, certainly in the UK. Uh, Alan Sorrell's uh, first reconstruction drawings showing the Roman baths at Leicester, uh, here for the Illustrated London News in 1936. So one of the first examples of the use of this type of uh, reconstruction. And Sorrell's work then appeared on archaeological sites across the UK. And in some ways, Sorrell is in part responsible uh, for the use of these kinds of reconstructions as quite a standard tool for the public interpretation of archaeological sites. Reconstructions, though, are also uh, ideological statements um, that represent particular views of the past um, and in relation to Roman Britain and other interpretations of the past. Um, it shows Rome as often as a superior and civilizing entity and predominantly one that is white and uh, male. And these, of course, have risks associated with them in that uh, very vague ideas can uh, become quite canonical uh, through the solidarity of these types of reconstructions. These sorts of things can cause uh, quite uh, significant debate. Uh, this is uh, the University of Reading's uh, reconstructions of the, uh, the so-called ivory bangle lady from York. Uh, and the publication of reconstructions of the ivory bangle lady, who's a wealthy woman of mixed race, probably from North Africa, um, stimulated some vitriolic responses of the type that now you know, characterises discourse on social media in the UK in particular at the moment. And we have things like this. Everyone knows what the average English person looked like 40 years ago. What's the point pretending that we have always been diverse? How does this left-wing claptrap get printed in a national newspaper? One good point came out of this article, however. If we were multicultural once and managed to reverse it, uh, we can do it again. So these sorts of uh, creating these kinds of uh, versions of the past has a lot of great deal of baggage um, associated with it. And my sort of interest in these areas uh, really relates to the ability of 
interpretation, simulation, reconstruction, um, to communicate, but also in its ways to, that it can challenge and confront uh, perceptions about the ancient world. Now, Caesar is a site, uh, Venter Iconorum, is a site that I've been involved with for about uh, 12 years, carrying out excavation and survey. And it's a site which has seen a number of different iterations of uh, these types of reconstructions. First, we had a painted reconstruction. Then we had the first um, computer-generated uh, reconstruction in the uh, in the sort of early early 2000s, and then this is one that I did with uh, Channel 4 for a Time Team program in which I deliberately wanted to make the Roman town look darker and more messy and have animals and steaming heaps of dung uh, present in it because I wanted to experiment with uh, presenting different versions of uh, the Roman past. In 2015, we created the first um, augmented reality interpretation for the site. And this was uh, something created by Jam Creative uh, Studios in collaboration with the Norfolk Archaeological Trust and, and uh, our team at the University of Nottingham. And this was very much of the type of augmented reality which is becoming increasingly common at archaeological sites in which uh, the viewer stands at one particular point and then gets different in representations of the past and you could have your tablet or your phone and swing around and look at how the uh, the site was in that particular uh, particular moment and these sorts of things are quite common uh, a lot of on-site VR experiences uh, particularly um, which are becoming increasingly common at sites rely on the viewer being static and looking from a series of pre-established viewpoints um, and this is because primarily for uh, safety reasons in that once you've got a headset on uh, you can't move about because you're going to fall over bits of archaeological site crash into other people and it will all go uh, horribly wrong what these often do is focus on buildings in particular and present static versions of the landscape without the people that inhabited uh, the landscape. What we wanted to do uh, with our new project as part of this AHRC uh, immersive experience uh, program was to create an immersive experience uh, that could be accessed via mobile devices uh, in an environment with no infrastructure and very variable uh, mobile signal. What we wanted to do was see if we could do it, uh, evaluate the ways in which our users interacted with and to what extent they were immersed with such an experience or believed it. Uh, address the sorts of technical challenges uh, involved with delivering this kind of experience and use our pilot project again to experiment with developing interpretations that challenged visitor perceptions of uh, Roman Britain. We wanted our visitors to uh, be able to experience a VR, uh, a VR version of our semi-derelict uh, Roman forum and to interact with individual characters uh, via their mobile devices while being able to physically move through uh, real space. We wanted also to create uh, soundscapes for them to get also the sound and uh, to get people to uh, talk to our characters. The environment that we created and our characters um, drew directly on the evidence from the archaeological research project and the experience allowed viewers to drill down further into different layers of information should they uh, should they wish the viewer the user goes through a a narrative in which they meet a series 
of characters who will speak to them and offer them a series of options. These options are something of an illusion because actually they all really lead to the same story. Uh, here you can choose, um, I'm seeking a healer, do you know one, or I want a beer. But actually, both those options will ultimately lead you uh, to the same story, in which you are a, vi a visitor who are provided with a remedy for an eye infection. And uh, <coughs> finding the third century Latin for gammy eye uh, proved quite uh, challenging. Uh, the characters are activated by moving towards them. You physically walk towards them and you stand in uh, these green circles and these indicate what uh, characters uh, you are supposed to visit, uh, visit next. This also uh, involves some interpretive challenges such as creating an authentic late uh, third century British Latin for our characters to speak and we used a script devised by my colleague Alex Mullen who's working as part of uh, an ERC project uh, on the spread of Latin in Western Europe and users would hear a snatch of this uh, Latin uh, before a translation is placed uh, over the top. So probably most of the users weren't necessarily aware of the subtleties of our late third century uh, British Latin, but nonetheless it was an interesting thing to try and create it. The app uses what Jam uh, Creative Studios called Markless AR, which uses is effectively based around using the phone's camera, gyroscope and accelerometer to ensure that the real world movement of the user is tracked by the virtual environment on their phone. You're guided by GPS to the start of the experience and then you carry out a treasure hunt scanning the ground for objects to collect buried artifacts which actually inform uh, the story and what this actually does is fix the position of the app so the forum is then reconstructed in uh, the, right, the right place. We conducted quite detailed uh, evaluation of the user response to the experience to inform uh, future iterations and we had a series of group workshops using people of different ages uh, plus a group from a local school. Uh, the responses were very positive, although it was of course a child who first worked out that you can actually take a screen grab to photograph your friends uh, alongside the forum uh, and we've used that quite a lot uh, subsequently. The user groups responded uh, very positively and the colours on these graphs uh, show different levels of experience with uh, AR or VR uh, experiences. And people reported themselves as being yeah, very much uh, immersed and engaged with the, uh, the project. And it really was surprisingly immersive, and even though you were looking at it on a small uh, mobile phone. Uh, and people found themselves stepping over chickens and stepping sideways to avoid characters and the market stalls. <laughs> the users on the site suggested that location was uh, particularly uh, important. Without location, without being there on the site, actually strolling across the field, uh, it was felt that that would lessen uh, the experience. Uh, and even people who are very familiar with the site uh, reported seeing it in a very, a very new light. Um, people were particularly interested in the language used by the characters and the use of translation uh, as opposed to hearing more of the original language caused quite a lot of uh, debates in our, in our feedback sessions. There were a number of challenges. It wasn't a perfect uh, app by any means. It remains glitchy in uh, certain aspects. It was very heavy on battery life and sunshine uh, is, remains a constant issue for anything uh, using a mobile phone or tablet.
we found that positioning uh, occasionally tended to wander and that was particularly the case if people put their hand accidentally over the, uh, the phone uh, camera and that would mean the forum would be reconstructed in a slightly different position and people found themselves getting gradually separated out or occasionally you could find yourself floating up above the forum or uh, at a sort of mole's eye view of the forum looking up at it. Um, and the richer and more detailed the animation, uh, obviously the more phone power is needed and the more time is created uh, is needed to create the uh, experience. <coughs> What's been interesting about this process, uh, and I think what might touch upon our wider practice, is it forces us to consider things that I think sometimes get left out of the normal interpretation process for field archaeology. It forced us to think about things like how did people dress, what, how did they how did they, what languages do, were they speaking? What colour was the fur on their dogs? Because we actually have the uh, ancient DNA evidence for our dogs to make our dogs the right, uh, the right colour. And these sorts of things are considered often in specialist reports, but I think sometimes they're left out of the uh, narratives associated with uh, excavation report reports. And it's also... I think there is a reciprocal relationship, if you like, between the way that we consider these things and the sorts of rather empty environments that we tend to create uh, in AR and VR reconstructions. And so I would, you know, might suggest that we could perhaps consider these sorts of simulations or reconstructions as more of an integrated part of the archaeological process. Uh, because these types of simulations are one of the uh, principal tools at our disposal uh, for engaging with audiences. Um, but equally, as archaeologists, we need to ensure that they are always uh, driven as far as possible by the evidence, although of course there is an enormous amount of in interpretation uh, involved in this. But given the power of such images and experiences. Um, I think it behoves those of us who uh, work with them to work ever more carefully and uh, reflectively with those who are creating them. And by placing these sorts of, this sort of activity at the heart of archaeology as a discipline, I think we're better engaged to move uh, into a world where such technologies are are becoming increasingly enmeshed within everyday life and the ways in which we present uh, the past to the public. And I'll stop there. Thank you.